So, ladies and gentlemen, we will have uh, Tarindu Amire Sekere as our second speaker. So, I will introduce. Dr. Tarindu is a full-time senior faculty member in University of Sri Jayewardenepura, Sri Lanka. His expertise is in management finance, digital transformation, marketing, and branding. He is the national and international award-winning speaker and has over 15 years of lecturing and mentoring. He was also CEO and founder of two organizations and consult over 100 organizations in the, in the past nine years in HR and branding. He was also the host of a talk show on national TV and author of the book on impromptu public speaking. Dr. Tarindu also has trained and coached over 3,500 executives within four years across Asia in leadership, communication, and training. So, uh, Dr. Tarindu, the time is here. Thank you very much, Shane, for that kind um, introduction. It's an absolute honor and pleasure to be presenting at this uh, Bravijaya International Conference in Accounting and Business. I bow one. Salam alaikum. Uh, my name is um, Tarun Omar Sekara, and I will be talking to you on the broader topic of adding value in today's businesses and the role that information systems and accounting has to play. On that broad topic, I'm going to pick one of the uh, more modern developments that everybody is talking, but uh, still we have a lot to do, and that is life in the metaverse. Metaverse is a topic, it's a subject that many of you have heard, many of you would have seen, and um, uh, Sherin, uh, my presentation, I timed it and planned it for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, because I have to take a flight later today in the afternoon, I would appreciate that uh, when my presentation is done, if anyone has a question uh, to ask, I believe I will be able to answer it uh, immediately. Sherin, I, I hope I'm audible. Yes, very right. clear, yeah. So improving business performance in the post-crisis world through accounting and information systems for a more valuable tomorrow, my focus will be on this term of more valuable. Now, when you're a business, what exactly do we mean about creating value? When you are an organization, this is a common question that a lot of people are asking, a lot of businesses are asking, how can we add more value? Value that customers will find important, value that customers will be willing to pay more and purchase value, ladies and gentlemen. So according to the uh, Harvard Business Review's article by uh, James Anderson and James Narus, what they, what they identified was that value in business markets is the worth in monetary terms of the technical, economic, service, and social benefits a customer or company receives in exchange for the price it pays for that market offering. So what is it that the customers or the companies are basically getting for themselves for the price they pay? That is what we call value. It can be a product. It can be a product plus the experience. It can be a product plus the experience plus the brand image, whatever it may be. If customers are willing to pay for that, ladies and gentlemen, there is value in that. Now, how will a more valuable tomorrow look like? Let's look at it from an investor's perspective. For investors, a more valuable tomorrow will basically be where for the money they've invested, they see bigger returns coming in. For customers, more valuable tomorrow will probably be where for the price they pay, they are getting a, a better experience, a better offering, or when the customers are changing their habits, their behaviors, their socializing behaviors, 
where the businesses are also changing according to that and then providing something of value to them. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the wider society, they will be saying, okay, for us a more valuable tomorrow from your business means that you are addressing our actual problems. You are addressing our concerns, concerns about climate change, concerns about uh, environmental damage, concerns about uh, not wanting to go to work anymore, but wanting to work from home continuously, but with a better experience, with a better socializing experience. These are how for different segments, for different parties, a more valuable tomorrow will look like. For example, today we see that about 66 uh, rivers, uh, main rivers of the world are actually, we, I mean, we see this experience where uh, they are they're, they're drying up. So obviously the, for the wider society, a more valuable tomorrow will be where companies are actually doing something about this problem about this problem, right? Okay, now, what are the key themes in this post-crisis business world? Number one, sustainability and consciousness. People are saying, look, we want the businesses we buy from, the businesses we deal with, we want you to actually be uh, more environmentally friendly and conscious towards our uh, planet, right? That's what they are clearly saying. And also, Digital life, that's where the whole metaverse and all these developments are coming in. If you look at uh, the metaverse, it's a common term given to all these digital virtual worlds in which you can be joining in and you see actual characters, you know, you're interacting with. You're not just texting or chatting with another WhatsApp name. No, you have an actual human being uh, on the other side, a character with whom your character is uh, interacting. Um, hybrid and flexible work. We have a great resignation going on as we speak. And for the reason for this is simply that people are accustomed and used to working from home and they don't want to give up on that comfort. Sometimes you do get very practical challenges as well, like in Australia, for example. Now, in Australia, the businesses are saying, look, come and um, you know, come back to work, but the employees are actually finding it difficult to find proper daycare facilities and all that, right? And amid all these developments, we also see a lot of deglobalization happening. We see a lot of countries try, trying to set up their own uh, uh, manufacturing because, you are, because the pandemic has clearly shown us that um, depending too much on um, the global supply chains can be risky and putting your country in jeopardy. Even in your own country, ladies and gentlemen, in um, Indonesia, I believe the leader of Indonesia has recognized that, uh, you know, that, they, that the country is looking at, you guys are the largest electric vehicle um, manufacturer, that you don't want to just electric vehicle uh, battery manufacturer and you don't want to just uh, keep on sending some of the uh, the nickel uh, as exports, but rather to add more value within Indonesia and produce more uh, complete uh, batteries. So clearly, there's a lot of uh, focus towards countries being able to move up the value chain uh, as well. Now, my specific focus here will be towards the second option, which is the focus on digital life or metaverse and how we need to recognize that there is value there. The, the book uh, by um, uh, Alpha Mintz, right, called The Post-Pandemic uh, Business Playbook, recognized three main developments, right? The counter-COVID framework, they called it. Create emotional connections, demonstrate value, expand your digital footprint. Now, the metaverse is basically where all these three come into play, right? Um, all these three will come into play. And one of the biggest problems with working from home or working using the Zoom and all those people said, 
We don't have that ability to have those emotional interactions, emotional connections. We don't see that, right? So how does the metaverse become a solution for that? This is something we need to explore. So first of all, information systems can help us towards, because the broader focus is on information systems and uh, accounting systems here today. Um, information systems can help us with, um, you know, in many ways, as we try to go for a digital life adoption. Um, virtual meetings, virtual homes, virtual clothing, virtual locations, right? Um, basically, information systems can provide us with all of this. However, the key question, ladies and gentlemen, will be, how well can we adopt our business to match the metaverse lifestyle? Metaverse, the virtual verse where people are looking at living in, how can our business adopt to that? Is our business going to be in the business of providing virtual clothing? Or are we going to build virtual properties there? What will be our business model? So what exactly is you know, life on the metaverse about? What is the metaverse? So we say in, in the simplest of sense, it's a real world like digital world. It's a real world like digital world. You see the interaction, you see the people, you see it in 3D, right? Now, there are a couple of other interesting definitions to go with. I, I personally like the one by the Global Director of Technology Innovation at Nike, and I'll come back to Nike in a bit on this matter. But they say that he has mentioned that I think the metaverse is an all-encompassing space in which all digital experience sits the observable digital universe made up of, a, of millions of digital galaxies. What a wonderful way to put it. People always think metaverse means Facebook. No. Metaverse is a common term given to all these digital worlds which are out there. Right? And if you look at some of the most common famous metaverse platforms, you have Decentraland and now Facebook has come up with Meta. There's so much to observe. There's so many different, um, my friends, there is so many, so many different um, uh, digital worlds, digital, uni uh, digital um, universes, or uh, the galaxies out there. So the common term we give to all those uh, digital worlds put together, that's the metaverse. That's the metaverse. So if you look at Decentraland, you get uh, one there, Right. There's a there's a list of uh, very famous, you know, uh, metaverses which you one needs to know, which one needs to kind of you know have an idea on, and it will definitely help uh, you to understand which of these are actually uh, growing. Right. But there is a. It, it's not just about this. What Facebook has been talking about. Facebook was kind of the. Uh, um, the first one of the first companies to openly come and uh, talk about it. But there are so many other uh, metaverse uh, platforms which are out there. Right now, more than Facebook's meta, you get Decentraland and similar ones where even without that virtual headset, you can still see your characters, you can still interact. Some of the um, famous uh, musicians have held concerts in these digital worlds of the metaverse. Now, metaverse is a topic we can speak for days, but since we are, you know, on the clock here, I'm going to get into something very specific, connected with value, and that is NFTs, non-fungible tokens. A non-fungible token, ladies and gentlemen, is basically about uh, what we recognize as um, it's uh, a digital asset that represents a real-world object, such as what? Such as art, music, in-game in -game items, and then uh, also where we can be videos, and they are bought and sold online. You pay for them with cryptocurrency, and also they are programmed just like your Bitcoins and your Ethereums and so on. Now, I have an example here. The picture right on top is Sigiria. One, one of the very famous landmarks of my country, my beautiful country, right? Which you are most welcome to visit, academics and students, everyone. 
Now, if you look at it, uh, that's the that's the famous landmark or the monument. However, right uh, below it, you see another digital version of it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, this digital version is what we call and what we uh, recognize as a non fungible token art. It's a NFT art. This was recently sold for a couple of thousands of dollars, and they said. If Sigiriya was built in the digital world with a digital twist, this is how it will look like. So someone comes up with an art, makes it available. Anybody can buy it, own it. Later, let's say, if Sigiriya becomes more popular for some reason, you can always sell that. So, and uh, the beauty of it is that they will keep that ownership record intact. Normal digital art, anybody can claim it, anybody can you know share it and download and try to um, sell saying it's mine. In the NFT, there is a proper record clearly showing who owns what, right? Would you believe it that this kind of monkey art got sold for you know, you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. And even in this virtual world, where why I'm coming to value, so this is value. NFT is value. If people are willing to buy, if people are willing to pay, that's value, ladies and gentlemen. Now, specifically speaking, life in the metaverse means you're not going to be running around on naked digital bodies. You need to clothe them. You need to give them clothes. That's exactly where NFT is coming. We are having today uh, what we call as virtual clothing. Virtual clothing. Virtual clothing basically will be how you dress up your uh, digital avatars in the metaverse, right? Digital avatars in the metaverse, how are you going to dress them up, clothe them? Now, this is valid. People willing to pay and buy clothes. People see a digital design of a cloth today as real value. 10 years ago, a digital design of a clothing item was just used to display on a website just to see it. No one was going to pay for them. But today in a digital world, customers are willing to pay. So that means the non-fungible tokens, NFTs, have become value in the world, in the post-crisis business world, uh, in the metaverse. And the best example, ladies and gentlemen, Nike started designing shoes for the metaverse. Nike started designing digital shoes for uh, the this virtual world worlds of the metaverse and recently they said we've been selling these shoes online uh in the metaverse for people to buy and wear and look at that 185 million dollar worth sales with virtual sneakers value ladies and gentlemen this is value you're selling virtual shoes and people are willing to pay up to 185 million dollars worth of total money and buy them right so and some of these shoes so they have been issued about twenty thousand uh, of these shoes and some of these shoes basically uh have been sold at hundred and thirty four thousand dollars just for one pair they call it as crypto kings it's the same technology like blockchain nfts run on the same technology it's just that uh, today people find this to be of value in the metaverse and as I come to the end, how should information systems and accounting systems change on this matter? Well, in my view, the enterprise systems should be able to store and release NFTs much more easily. Future businesses, just like they have a warehouse for you know physical goods, physical products, they need to have the ability or a digital storage of NFTs to store and to release them quickly. They should provide faster capabilities to create these NFTs. That's also important, right? Companies should be able to digitally create their own F NFTs. And mind you, today, there it's so easy. There are various platforms like Mid Journey, Discord platform, where you can go describe what kind of an art you want. And using AI, you will be able to get that art generated just by describing what picture you want. Unbelievable level of advancements in AI which can help towards the creation of NFTs for a, for a metaverse world, because after all, 
all those metaverse homes will need nice arts and paintings. Then we talk about uh, better tracking and blockchain ability. The corporate systems need to be able to track and see. If you look at Nike, for example, they are probably tracking where are the shoes that we produced and released. Where are the shoes that we uh, let the market know uh, that are there and who has bought it? Because if you issue an NFT, the record has to be kept who owns it now. Because later on, if somebody wants to sell those shoes to somebody else, the buying party will want to know is this actually belonging to this person? And that blockchain record of that NFT uh, will be very helpful to know this is the original seller. Role of accounting. Well, you, we have, I believe we have a lot of young students today from the finance sector, this being a business conference and accounting conference. Question is, young ladies and gentlemen, how do we recognize these NFTs in our financial statements? Accounting has to evolve to recognize these NFTs in our accounting statements. Right now, there are no accounting standards or statements um, in order to, uh, you know, like recognize NFTs, digital assets in our financial statements. But if a company is selling $185 million worth of it and getting revenue and profit, clearly we have to find a way to recognize them in the financial statements. Also, what about banks? Will banks be willing to accept NFTs as security? Right. And most importantly, like if you go for a loan, will the bank say, okay, you can keep your NFTs as a guarantee. But more than anything, the issue of how to address asset volatility. You buy a land, the price stays almost the same or increases in value over time. You buy a vehicle, you know, you have a value for that. But, and even at the end of five years, with certain depreciation, you can assume what the value will be. NFT values can change very quickly. We've seen last few uh, months, you know, Bitcoin price dropping drastically then picking up again. This will be the biggest challenge in recognizing NFTs as an asset class in accounting. And that's one something we need to address. The way forward, finally, I want to say that the global metaverse is basically, you know, it's a market was valued at about USD billion, 63.83 billion in 2021. This is expected to grow up to 100 billion in uh, 2022 and go all the way up to 1.5 trillion uh, by 2029. But the questions we need to ask, the customers of Indonesia, of the main businesses, especially retail, um, special, I mean, not only really retail for anything for that matter, maybe in a 10 years time, we will be seeing, uh, you know, the University of Bravija in the metaverse, we'll be seeing that, right? What value will your current customers expect from you in this metaverse? Is your organization ready to do that? And most importantly, what you're offering as at present, is it ready for the metaverse? If you are dealing with a clothing brand, how do you get them meta ready? If you are dealing with, let's say, a brand of vehicles, your people will be driving cars in the metaverse in the future. Are the vehicle companies ready to, uh, to really start offering their vehicles in uh, the metaverse? How metaverse ready are you as a person and how metaverse ready is the business you work for? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the question that I want to leave you with at the end of my keynote. And um, Ms. Shereen, um, I, if there are any questions, I would like to uh, take it now, since as I mentioned, I have a flight later on and I'm not sure whether I'll be available at that exact point of time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tarindu. It's uh, very interesting to talk about metaphors or digital life, you know. Uh, okay, so for all participants, if you have any question for Mr. Tarindu, you can uh, ask it uh, right now. Sharin, I may I also share my um, you know email address so if they have any questions later or related to research or anything they could uh, reach out to me is that all right yes it is completely all right you can share your email address mr arindu 
So if all online participants here, if you have any question, you can uh, ask it right away. Or you can ask later to Mr. Tarindu through email address. Okay, it's on the chat room. Sharina, maybe it's a little too early in the morning to ask questions for the students. I understand I, that. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So uh, I already hear much, uh, many about uh, what is should we do uh, about metaphors. Uh, uh, and then uh, about the metaphors, uh, I would like to ask you, so what is the most important thing that we should know? Uh, and uh, how we prepare, prepare a business if it's about uh, this digital life? Yeah, I think uh, that's a very um, good question. Uh, in my view, um, Sherina, I would say that what you really need to understand is that metaverse is growing. Uh, okay. And you need to realize where you can start. Start mm -hmm. matters. Start definitely matters. So as a person, my advice is as a person, get on the metaverse, create your avatar, pick one metaverse platform like Decentraland, create your avatar and you know keep tweaking it, changing it, adjusting it, number one. Then look at then you will begin to see how the other businesses are operating and then ask yourself, how can I take my business to the metaverse? Which metaverse should I really uh, be in? Like for example, if you are a fashion clothing brand, you, you have to recognize which metaverse is going to be having more young people involved and active. And that's where you go and set up the operation. Clothing brands like H&M have already set up uh, their um, uh, their uh, stores, digital stores, but they are uh, doing it on selected metaverse platforms where they know that's where the customers that matter to them are. So most important thing, I would, I would leave you with three things. Number one, it is the future and it's growing. Set up your own character in a metaverse and start exploring. I hope by the end of the conference today, we will have 151 more characters created in uh, a selected metaverse. And number three, set up a small, simple um, basis or rather see small, simple operation for your business. See how it's going to be um, applicable and keep growing it slowly and being relevant to the customers out there. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Tarindo. It's uh, very interesting about how we should get uh, and create as uh, because we know that it the metaverse is always growing and we should go on with that yes okay so for the participant is the equation before we going further to our next speaker thank you very much and wish everyone all the best okay thank you very much Mr. Tarindu.